It's still Chris Eddy in front, shooting for five in a row. From to catch a thief and loop by Solitario. Snakes alive. That's five in a row for Chris Eddy. How did Chris Eddy pull up after the James Nanny Sarton Memorial? So, uh, he ate up Sunday. Yeah. Um, Monday we gave him sort of the other night. Just quick trot around. Quite canter. One round. Um, Perp. So listen, play. What's he like around the stable? What's his personality like? Well, look at him. He's a sleeping box, so yeah, no, nah, he's a thinker. He's just so, so lovely. Just um, when you get with him, you see everyone just watch him go down the track. They watched him for quite a while because he um, just dawdles to the track, just half asleep. But as soon as he turns his head to the race course, he's bang, he's awake. When he first came into the stable, at what point did you realise that he had above average ability? We got him into work and he had never galloped before. And um, we got him up and going and we took him to a jump out at Pookie. Um, and it was the first time he's ever been on the grass. And I think Ace might have rode him, didn't he, this first one. And, he, and it was just up the straight at Pookie. And I said, down, look at his action. Where did that come from? And just like, holy hell. And, um, and he, from that jump out, he just got, didn't he? He just absolutely turned into a horse. Um, and we took him to a trial, didn't we, at Avondale? And it was the first trial of the day, then the trials got put off. He won that really easy, and his action on the grass was just beautiful. We sort of mucked around with him, didn't we, after that for a while, and he just got better and better and better. And I said to Daniel, mm, well before Christmas, didn't I? We said to him, we think this horse is the real deal, he's just a bit freakish. And then we took him back to the jump house, didn't we, and Craig Zaki rode him. And he must have won by about 150 metres. And Craig hopped off him and just said, this horse is probably the best horse I've ridden in New Zealand. And he said, you ride a thousand horses to get a horse that feels like he does. What attributes do you think make him so good? I just think it's his laid back nature, isn't it? And he never stresses or fusses about anything. He never uses any extra energy. Um, he's just cruisy, just an absolute cruisy horse. And never stresses, worries, barely sweats. He never blows. He's just, just, just cruises, and it just. And when he gets out of the racetrack, he's not wild or anything, and he jumps the gates, and he just wants to gallop, and he's just got that beautiful action, and he's really just a dream, you know. He's just dream horse to train. We just, he does it all. We've just got to dot the i's and cross the t's, basically. Tell me about how many horses you have in work and the facilities here. Yep, we um, lease this barn off Daniel at Bradley Park. Um, we keep up to 18 horses. We're working about 14 at the moment. Um, we've got some two-year-olds all turned out. Um, so we manage it from here. Um, it's easy, it's on the track, it's great facilities. Um, our training partnership, we started together last year. Um, Aaron's actually, we've worked together for 23 years now. And how does it feel to have your name in the book, especially when you're winning stakes races and have favourites for Group 1s? Yeah, um, well, it's, it's good start, isn't it? But, but um, yeah, no, I feel quite proud of it. Yeah. What would it mean to win the Group 1 2000 Guineas for both of you? Oh, it's a great feather in anyone's cap, isn't it, really? I mean, if he was to win, uh, it'll be Aaron's first Group 1 winner, which would be pretty special and also Daniel's first group one winner. So that'd be really special to so, say, especially when he bred it himself as well, you know, it's, 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 those moments like that are really good. And what about for you, Aaron? Yeah, it'd be, oh, it'd be unbelievable. Um, yeah, you don't get many chances like this. No, basically, no, no one gets a uh, chance like this. No, I, I know we've got a horse for this year, but try and give the horse every count. Um, Yes, it'd be so special. Yeah. You talk about Daniel, and he's of course the owner, Daniel Markley of Crescetti. Tell me about that relationship. Oh, look, Daniel's a he's a gentleman of the game. He really is. I mean, everybody says it. We all can't be wrong. Um, 
and he's a, an enthusiastic, would be the word, he's so enthusiastic. He's a very nervous owner on race day though, he's very nervous. I'm going to have to take some cetazine to Christchurch, I think, for him. I get nervous. I, I don't normally get nervous, but I get nervous with him. Um, and uh, the, you know, the guys have given me a bit of confidence along the way through. They, you know, I get laughed at a fair bit, to be fair, on race days <laughs> as I come in, sort of having walked the box for the week prior. But um, uh, but you get there, and, and the horse actually gives you a bit of confidence. He's he's pretty much unflappable, this boy. He's uh, nice and relaxed on race day, and you know he tends to settle everyone's nerves a bit. Take me back to the start with Crochetti. Tell me how you came up with the mating. Well, the Zakinto O'Reilly cross, you know, works works really, really well. I suppose that was the starting point. And uh, Russell Warwick's always drilled it into me that we're here to breed a race horse, not a sales horse. And, um, you know, I, I run all the matings past Russell uh, every single season. And sometimes at two in the morning, he'll receive random emails from me with a new theory. And um, he's been very, very kind, very generous with uh, with his opinions and thoughts. And um, no, he liked he liked this, uh, this cross as well. And, um, and uh, that, that sealed it for me. The mare fold down in Australia and off the plane in New Zealand came a lovely weanling. Tell me about your first thoughts of Crochetti when he arrived. Yeah, lovely, lovely type of horse. Um, always, um, always been an attractive uh, type. Everything was put together really, really well for him. Carol Walker thought the same thing. She's always, uh, she knows I'm a, a mad Dean Martin fan, so uh, she's always had the name Dino in reserve for a nice foal and, and that's how we got the stable name. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. Dino, the stable name, Crochetti, the race name. Tell me the backstory there. Yep, so uh, Dino Crochetti was actual Dean Martin's real name. So um, uh, we uh, threw a few ideas around as to what sort of theme we could we could come up for a race name. And uh, actually Danny said, well, you know, let's let's not go too far from um, from home truths and, and stick to Crochetti as, uh, as his race name. You're a pretty hands-on owner. You were telling me you get down to the track most Saturdays to watch the horse work. Yeah, I love coming down and, and chatting with the, with the team down here and seeing the horses go around. It's a, it's a wonderful atmosphere and um, you know, everyone gets on really, really well together. And uh, So I, I really enjoy uh, catching up with, uh, with the team. And um, uh, yeah, it's wonderful. And just to actually be, as I won't say, um, uh, you know, directly uh, too involved, but um, you know, it's just nice to be nice to be uh, watching on, I suppose. It's probably a question that maybe you don't like to think too hard about, but how many horses are you associated with at the moment? Uh, how many broodmares have you got? Tell me about uh, the farm. I'd like some deniability on this one, Emily. It's um, uh, look, there would be. Yeah, we'd be breeding 26 mares this season. Uh, we've got 19 foals uh, either arrived or due uh, as well. So uh, we're ramping uh, up, I suppose, or um, uh, my involvement, uh, trying to ramp that up and, and focus on the quality. Um, and I suppose it's going against the, the declining foal crop. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's more to come for New Zealand racing. I think we're in, at the, the forefront of some really exciting times with Entain's involvement and some great leadership with NZTR with Cameron George and, and Bruce Sharrick and the team up there. Um, I think they're doing a wonderful job and um, it was just great to be great to be a part of it and, and uh, looking to support the industry a bit further. Am I right in thinking it would be a first group one for you? You're right, absolutely. So uh, we've had a few, been very fortunate to, to win a few stakes races but never quite the group one. Um, we've run second um, with a course called Captain Kurt in the 2000 Guineas. Uh, Found a horse uh, slightly better in Basi Brahma of all things. So, uh, um, but no, that was that was a, a taste of things to come, I suppose, and uh, and something to look forward to, something to aim for. Look, it would mean a, mean an awful lot. It would mean an awful lot. You know, having um, having been part of the breeding um, of the horse and um, having you know raised him here at the farm, uh, it, that means a hell of a lot. Trained here at Viley Park by Aaron and Danny. Um, you know, it's a real a real family effort, I suppose, uh, if I can put it that way. So it would just add a little bit more to it.